Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. This is Pastor Dave Manny. Greetings from the Refugee Assembly of the Army, located in 2808. Grand student in the city of North Virginia. And once again, we thank Yahweh for this opportunity to come into your homes, on your jobs, wherever you might be today, to once again give Yahweh praise and honor for his bow. Bountiful Moroccans and what he has bestowed upon all of us. Another week he's brought us through. Yeah. Giving heed to our supplications and our petitions. Someone said he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we thank him for all that he's done. So much to give him praise for today. Somebody said he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Today on our prayer list we have Brother Robert Vanderbrand, Brother Sean Johnson of North Carolina, Brother Larry Parker and Sister Doris Parker. Leon Anthony Woodbury Sr., Richmond, Virginia. Brother Damalola and Sister Rosanne of California. Sister Sharon Jackson of Chicago, Illinois. Sister Cecilia West of North Virginia. Sister Deborah and Brother George Butler. Also, we have Mother Florence Graham of Richmond, Virginia. Dick of Joseph Otis Sr. of North Virginia. Sister Henrietta Benjamin. Sister Frances Austin of North Carolina. Sister Maddie and Brother Henry Enzel of Mississippi. Sister Joylyn Van Slyman of New York. Sister Mary Jackson of New York. Sister Sharon Jackson of New York. Sister Diane Bowie of New York. Brother Darrell Bowie and Brother Ewing Bowie, both of New York. Mother Odessa Askey of Austin, North Carolina. Sister Connie Wynn. Brother Brian K. Sullivan of Upper Harbor, Oh yeah. Sister Bertha Morris. Yes, y'all. Sister Bernice Lovelace. Yes, y'all. To the Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Manquin, Virginia, King William County. Yes, yeah. Pastor Elder. Joseph Sims Jr. in this summer family. Yes, sir. To the Refuge Temple of Seminary Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pastor Liz, Bishop Milton J. Hunt oh, yeah. of Richmond, Virginia. To the Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, North of Virginia, and the Assembly family. To our Zoom ministry today, my brothers and our sisters, to our YouTube subscribers, you are on our prayers today. We praise Yahweh for you and thank Yahweh for you. And as we approach the throne today, to humbly receive Yahweh for his guidance, his direction, for his strength of love, for his healing virtue. All to be done in the name of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes. Father Yahweh, we thank you once again for this another day that you have allowed. Yes. Another day that you've allowed us to see. Yes. Thank you. So much to give you praise for. 
We adore you, we lift you up, we magnify your name. For there is none like you, hallelujah. Father, as we have come before your throne this morning, bowing humbly, we want to say thank you for another week you brought us. Thank you. With not hurt all the danger, Yahweh, you saw us through. You kept us, you protected us. With your finger and love, once again, Father, through our last night's sleep, early rise this morning, it was you, Yahweh, who touched us once again. We thank you for the blood surrounding woman in our veins, the activity of limbs and muscles, the articulation of speech, the ability to think, to process. Yes, thank you, Yahweh. We thank you right now for a cognition of of our faculties right now. Father, we, we could be in a situation where we don't even know that we even hear. Father, thank you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough, Yahweh, for what you've done and for what you're going to do. Father, look down right now upon your children. Those right now, fathers, whose bodies are racked in pain. Father, move by your power and by your spirit. Father, you said the whole You are the mighty one of all flesh. You declare, is there anything too hard for you to do? We know right now, Father, you are that doctor that never lost a patient. We know you right now to be Yahweh Rapha. Rapha, thank you. You are the great healer, Yahweh. Thank you. Nobody like you. We know you to be Yahweh Tishkidu. You are our righteousness. We know you to be Yahweh Roah. You are Yahweh our shepherd. Through the valley of death that we travel, but we fear no evil because you are with us. Yeah. And we thank you right now for your son Yeshua coming to die that we might have a right to the tree of life. Oh Father, thank you for sending the Ruach Akadash, that comforter who have come to a boy to live with us, take up residency in this old fragile temple of ours. Father, thank you for this is the day you made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the beautiful day that you've allowed us to see. Yes. We thank you right now for the believers. We thank you for everyone right now under the sound of my voice. Touch each soul right now. Father, listening to this prayer of supplication. And touch those aching muscles right now. Those bodies right now wrapped in pain. That side and nerve, that migraine head. Father, who by your power? Yes, Yahweh, that diabetes, Yahweh, that cancer, all matters of disease. Move by your power right now. We know you can. We know you can. Father, move right now. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. There is none like you, Father. Oh, Father, thank you right now. For your healing virtue. You declare by your son, strength, we are healed. Father, right now, we claim your victory right now. And Yahweh, those right now, Father, who are going through Yahweh examinations. Oh, Yahweh, surgeries right now. Father, let your loving hands of healing right there. God, the hands of the surgeons right there. Ooh, by your power. Oh, Father, thank you right there. And all that our steps right there in your word. Let your word be a light unto our pathway. A lamp unto our feet. Father, we know right now that this is the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. And be glad then. Thank you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. We pray right now for the peace that only you can give that passes all understanding. It is you, Yahweh. It is you, Father. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. And we magnify your name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a peace. Though our hearts and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for our soul. We can say this way.
Yes, we are, Father. Thank you. I'm grateful.
Let's give him a break. Worthy is the Lamb today. Worthy is the Lamb. You may be seated with that. So much to give Yahweh praise for. And for what he's going to do. Joy unspeakable, full of compassion and love. We praise Yahweh today for you, beloved, for those of you who are present today. We thank Yahweh for you, and we thank Yahweh for this communion Sunday today. Start of another month in the year of 2024, Yahweh is good all the time. And for those who've been Barack this month to see another birthday for those who have been the rock to see anniversaries, days of remembrance. We thank Yahweh for you and for his compassion and his love to allow us to see another day. Hallelujah. So much to give him praise for. We're going to have a few selections today and we thank Yahweh for those who are present today, thank Yahweh for our brothers and sisters who are viewing by Zoom. Praise Yahweh for you and for you and your families, that Yahweh will strengthen you, keep you, protect you, lift you up, take you through. And whatever you may be going through at this time, Yahweh has it all in control. And Sister Margaret sang that song, he took that reassurance, and he put it way down deep in our soul. Yah has it all in control. At this time, we're going to be favored with a selection from Ella Daniel Belcher today. And praise Yahweh for him and for his ministry and for his commitment to the body of the Messiah. For his faithfulness. For his love and compassion. For Yahweh's word. For Yahweh's word. Hallelujah. 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 I found out as I got older, more and more I had to lean on Yahweh. I had to lean and trust on Yahweh. Mm -hmm. What a fellowship. What a joy is mine.
Thank Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 There will be mountains that I will have to climb. And there will be battles that I will have to fight. But victory or defeat it's up to me to decide, but how can I expect to win if I never try? I just can't.
don't believe, he brought me this far. To thank Yahweh for Sister Belcher. At this time, we're going to have a solo from Sister Margaret Whitbury, followed by Sister Florine. And we'll move over with our service. Let's give Yahweh a praise. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. 
creation of Almighty Yahweh, just how marvelous he is and how great he is. The songwriter picked up his pen and found the words, O Yah, my mighty one. I say in awesome wonder how great, how great thou art.
How great! Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thou art. Yes, sir! Hallelujah! Thanking Yahweh for this another day. Hallelujah! I pray and hope. Hallelujah! Aunt Mary and Cousin Sharon, you enjoyed that today. Hallelujah! For that was for you both. And may Yahweh continue to barack you both with his finger of love. Touch your bodies and continue to strengthen you. As you continue your journey, I want to say today a special prayer for a sister. I just received word and I want to acknowledge and to thank Yahweh for her. What I love so much about this ministry, we don't have form or fashion or any particular order of service. We can insert and intervene at any time. And I want this morning for the believers to pray with me and pray for our sister Sister Angela in Richmond, part of the Taylor family, and I praise Yahweh for her and for her, her siblings, her sisters, and her brothers, and they have been so special to this ministry down through the years. And today, whatever you may be going through, my sister, Yahweh has it all in control. As we bow our heads this moment before we go into our word today, Father, Yah, I ask that you would look down upon our dear sister, Sister Angela. Angela is your daughter, your child, your vessel. Father, touch her right down from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, move by your power and by your spirit, but above all, Yahweh, give right now, Yahweh, her that peace that passeth all understanding. Touch her mind right now. Yahweh, give her that comfort that she needs. Father, I know and I realize, Father, she's still going through. Father, strengthen her right now. You know her situation. You know her circumstances right now. Let your ministering angels give charge over her right now, Yahweh, to keep and protect her. Her going out, Yahweh, and her coming in. Let the blood of Yahshua be upon her right now. Cover with the blood of Yahshua right now. Oh, Yahweh, engulf right now. Oh, Yahweh, your presence in her life. Yahweh, let the spirit of Rafika right now. Oh, Yahweh, just rest in a board right now with her. Yahweh, cover that home right now with the blood of Yahshua. Throughout the night, Father, throughout the days ahead, Yahweh, give Angela the peace that she needs. Father, touch her heart. Touch her mind right now. Strengthen her right now. In the precious name of your son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahweh, this is your child. This is your daughter. Continue to barack Angela. Oh, Yahweh, strengthen her mind right now. Yahweh, let her know right now that all power is in your mighty hand. Father, let her know right now, Yahweh, that you have all and everything in control. Father, right now, give her that strength that she needs. Give her that presence. Give her that warmth. Give her that love. Yeah. Let her feel your presence right now. In the precious name of your dear son, yeah. Yahshua HaMashiach. For this, we will be eternally grateful. In Yahshua's precious name, let the redeem of Yahweh say, Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh is good. All the time. All the time. And we thank him. And we praise him. Hallelujah. For what he's done. And for what he's going to do. Oh, yeah. Yahweh has barocked us to see another day. Yes. You know, I had I had some songs, bold songs on my heart today. I, I thought about doing a medley. Mm -hmm. One was, Oh, How I Love Yahshua. Remember that one? Yes. Yes. And there's another one that's, that's entitled, Yahshua is a healer in the world, don't believe. Mm -hmm. and I love this one right here. Just another day that Yahweh he has kept me. Hallelujah. Just another day that Yahweh he has kept me. He has kept me from all evil. With my mind stayed on Joshua. 
Just another day Then your way He has kept me Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One more day That your way He has kept me One more day That your way He has kept me he has kept me from all evil when my mind stayed on Yahshua. Just another day that Yahweh he has kept me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for he has kept me from all evil. Yes, he has. With my mind stayed on Yahshua. Hallelujah. Just another day. Just another day. Yes. That Yahweh has kept me. Hallelujah. You know, this morning's the scripture lesson spoke all around my message today. Hallelujah. And uh, I thank Yahweh for it. Yes. Oh, yeah. In this life, we struggle. And we go through anguish. Yeah. We go through tests. We go through trials. Yes, oh, yeah. And we are bombarded every day with the constant reminder that we live in a world of sin. We live in a world where we were born in sin. The nature of sin is in our members. Mm -hmm. The nature of sin still beckons mm -hmm. us to relinquish our walk, our talk, our journey that we embarked on with Yahshua. Many of us have been on this journey for a long time. There have been intervals and times in our life where the thoughts have come to give up, throw in the towel. Just forget this whole walk with Yahshua. And go with the world and just live your life and do your thing. But scripture lets us know that this is certainly the agenda of the enemy. To paint the picture. For children of Yahweh to give up and throw in the towel. But I stop by to let you know, as I did some years ago, there's a war going on. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Not a war of weapons and bullets and bombs, but a war of spiritual infiltration. A war that's targeted at your mind to take you out. To take your thoughts, to take all of your hopes to take all of your trusting and your confidence and completely shut it down. The Apostle Paul, we know as Shaul from the Hebrew, often wrote about his struggles as a follower of Yahshua. And the fact that he grew up under very deep and heavy Mosaic teachings, highly educated man, speak several different languages. One who embarked on keeping the Mosaic teachings and trying to adhere to what he felt in his heart through his sincerity that anyone who went against Yahweh of the Old Testament should be dealt with. Shaul wrote three quarters of the New Testament we know as the New Covenant. And in his writings, Yahweh allowed us to see and experience a lot about his life, which also gave us a mirror of what we are to do as believers struggling in this world. There are many walls 
that are going on in the world. But the greatest war that you and I will ever experience is the internal war that we all face every day inwardly. And that war is a war of the mind, of the flesh, a war to completely disconnect you from your source, your strength, your joy, and your peace. Satan has launched an attack on the minds of Yahweh's people. And if you're not careful, he will seize your thoughts. He will take away your joy and your peace. He will get you so disconnected that the scriptures will become a thing of the past and a book that you avoid even reading. Yahweh wants us to know today that e even in the midst of this war that's going on in our members, there is hope. There is an individual who came to earth to take away all the struggle, all the pain, all the sorrow. All that we would ever go through, he experienced in his 33 and a half years on earth. So oftentimes we seem to forget that Yahshua was a young man. He died a young man. He didn't see 40 years old. He just barely got into his 30s and it was time for Yahweh to finish the prophetic prophecy and to bring his son back to sit at his right hand and to become that mediator, that propitiator, that go-between, that one who could interpret for us, that one who was the go-between, that one who will give us the joy and peace, the ear that we need. So oftentimes in life, we get to a point where we don't even know what to say and how to say. We get so burdened down that our lives become so bombarded that the words won't just even come out. I love the fact that Yahweh gave us an intercessor, one who understands, one who knows when these tears roll down our cheeks, it could be for the loss of a loved one. It could be for a broken heart. And how many of us know the feeling of a broken heart? Losing a mother, a father, a child, a friend, a relative. These pains never go away. But Yahshua lets us know that even in the midst of our pain and our sorrow, there is joy that passeth all understanding. There is peace that passeth all understanding that this world cannot understand or begin to even interpret. There are no words to express the peace and joy that Yahshua gives us. But yet in our peace and our joy, there still comes the trials of life, the struggles of life. We're going to talk about that war that's going on. This war that has come to take our minds and to take our thoughts and to take our joy, to take our hope and our trust. Yahweh wants us to understand that trusting him now and believing him now and hoping for him now is more important than ever it has ever been in our existence here on earth. If you're hearing my voice today, Yahweh wants to speak from his word today, from the seventh chapter of Romans. I was there last week. And Yahweh apparently is not finished with it yet. He would not let me leave. And of course, it's important to understand as we look at the word today, we want to certainly give ear and let our hearts 
be ministered to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So much to give him praise for. Hallelujah. So much to give him praise for. In the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul comes to us and he speaks about the law. The natural law and the spiritual law. One law was designed and developed and put in place to give man a conscience. Let me say that again. One law was put in place to give man a notification, to be notified that something is out of place, something is not right. Irregardless of what you think, it is not business as usual. We don't just go about life doing what we think and what we feel without realizing that there are some consequences that come along with it. And Shaul brings us to a very hard reality in the seventh chapter of Romans as he speaks to us from his own personal experience but also as the Ruach HaKadosh deals with him as a mortal, as a human being, as a mere man who, who's going through the same things that you and I are going through. Life teaches us that we are flesh. We are not spiritual beings yet, we are still flesh. And with flesh comes consequences. There was a way of escape, a temporary band-aid put on man that allowed him to experience some things in life as he goes through this journey that would afford him an opportunity to know what lies ahead. You cannot escape sin. You can't run away from sin. You can't hide yourself from sin. Sin has always had a grasp on mankind. Man was born in sin. As a baby comes out of her mother's womb, as beautiful and as cute as that baby is, that baby comes out of a womb and has in its nature sin. Sin is the enemy of Yahshua. Satan, because of his ingenuity, his manipulation, his persuasiveness and his deceptiveness persuaded man in the Garden of Eden to fall. And when man fell, sin entered into the picture. It was Yahweh's intentions for man to live a long time. And Yahweh even fulfilled part of that commission before he decided that man was getting too big for himself. Yep. When man decided that he was going to build a tower to heaven, mm -hmm. Yahweh says, it's time to shut it down. Mm -hmm. And even now, in his wildest imagination, yeah. even with the telescope that's named, uh, I think it's Webb, can't think of the first name of the gentleman who was named after. But that telescope is out in the universe taking photos and pictures of the universe, sending just unbelievable photographs back to NASA. And I've seen some of them on my phone. You get a chance to pull some of them up and look at, just look at what Yahweh is, a, is allowing man to see. And what he tells us in his word, and you know, you don't have to get on an Apollo spaceship to go out into the universe to understand that you will never figure Yahweh out. Scripture says his ways are past finding out. 
And you know, when you think about the secret things, Deuteronomy 29 and 29, one of my favorite verses, one easy to remember. When there are questions that people give you and you don't have an answer for, just go to Deuteronomy 29 and 29. And what does Deuteronomy 29 and 29 say? It essentially says that the secret things of this world, Yahweh holds to himself. And he essentially lets you know what he wants you to know. So even in our greatest attempts to try to figure out the creator, Yahweh in all of his infinite wisdom, he said, well, man, you got smart. I look at technology, I look at Hollywood, and I don't know what's going on, but even last night as I was looking, there were a series of movies that were on various different channels, and all of them painted the picture of aliens. And interesting that these Hollywood producers, now at this time, now that spring is coming on, what kind of picture we want to paint in the minds of people and what kind of, and what, what kind of thoughts we want to give. We want to give man this thought of celestial beings or beings outside of earth and just put in our psyche that, you know, there are creatures from other planets and all of this. And all of this is, to me, is certainly ushering in when Hamashiach returns back, man is going to have his agenda and his and his monologue already ready. And it's gonna read some, somewhat like this. Some force, alien beings came to Earth and abducted a segment of people. They were taken up. We didn't see a spaceship, but it happened so fast and people disappeared, we can't quite figure it out. But man is going to have his monologue already prepared. And those of us who know that Yahshua will soon to return, we got some adjustments that we need to make prior to. The only thing that can keep us out of heaven and the only thing that can keep us out of inhabiting our new body is the old body. Yep. Let me say that again. The only thing that can keep you out of heaven yes. inheriting your new body is your old body. Yep. And what is it that your old body has authority over? Your nature. Mm -hmm. Your nature. Your nature is sin driven. Yes. Your nature is sin born. Your nature is sin manifested always to let you know even in the midst of your supernatural experience that many of you experience as those who did on the day of Pentecost, the Ruach HaKadosh is fighting every day on your behalf to instill in your mind because the battle is between the Ruach HaKadosh ministering to your mind uh -huh. and Satan impregnating your mind yeah, with fiery dots. Mm -hmm. See, these fiery dots, they're coming to ensure that Satan gets a grasp and keep you and hold you yeah. where he has you. Uh -huh. Some folk are on the fence with their spirituality. Some folk, are, some folk are just walking the narrow line on the fence. And they can step over either side on any given day. There are days that we do well and there are days that we fall down and have to get back up. Those are days that remind us that you are not out of the arms of Yahweh yet. It allow us to see that life is a struggle. Life is a continuous journey. And the decisions that you make in life are predicated on what you believe, what you see, and what you're willing to endure. The flesh don't want to be obedient to the spirit 
because they war against each other. The spirit and the flesh can't walk hand in hand. What does the spirit and the flesh have in common? Absolutely nothing. A carnal mind is that eminent against Yahweh. A carnal mind is a mind that's always against what scripture says, but wants to take on its own opinions and its own feelings. See, you gotta be careful, <coughs> excuse me, when you take on a mindset if you try to start figuring Yahweh out and you try to negotiate with him, you try to say, well, Yahweh, I understand that you wrote that back in the, in the old days for them people, but we live it now. You know, what you got for us? The scriptures of Yahweh wasn't written for the old, old time or for the new time. It was written for mankind. And we all have to adhere to what the word, the word of Yahweh has not changed. The presentation and the giving of Yahweh word has changed because scripture lets us know that in the last days men will not endure sound doctrine. They're going to heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. They're looking for preachers and false prophets to give them things that they want to hear. And the fallacy with that is this. Why would you eat and drink something that you know is, is not good for you? Even our physical bodies lets us know that there are certain foods that we shouldn't eat. There are certain drinks that we shouldn't drink. Our health is an indicator of that. Doctors give us advice to hopefully get better, to live a little longer if we listen to what they say based on what they have found out to be true through process of elimination. And really, medical doctors are only giving you words of wisdom based on what they've seen. All kind of medicines are tested and tried to see how they're going to work on the human body. The human body is so complex. There are things that go on in our human body. Man, man to this day, medical science can't explain. They don't know. They don't understand. But at the end result, Yahweh lets us know that he is the creator Hallelujah. of that body. Isn't it interesting that the seventh chapter that we're going to look at today speaks in reference to how we struggle with sin. And it touches on some subjects. Let's start at the very first verse. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. I want you to be assured, I want you to be aware, brethren, I'm speaking to men who got some knowledge of the law. And I read, I read, I read this because I said this morning as they were talking about John in the book of John, how Yahshua had conversations with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Well, Yahshua is gone now, and here is Shaul coming in here talking to the same folk. And now the difference is Shaul was a Pharisee. He was a man that knew the law well. But look, but look what he says. How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he lives. See that question mark there? The law governs a person only during his lifetime. That was their thing. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. Let's keep reading on. So that she is no adulteress, Though she be married to another man. Uh -huh. Wherefore, my brother, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Yahshua Messiah. And it's interesting that Shaul starts his letter out, this, this particular chapter, his letter out, by talking about marriage between man and woman, husband and wife. And he talks about being married more than one time. 
And he talks about what the law says. Yeah. Let's read on. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Yahshua Messiah. So, brothers, he says, you too, in the body of Yahshua Messiah, have ended your relation to the law. Your husband, your master, used to be the Mosaic law. But you died, as it were, with Yahshua HaMashiach. So what did Yahshua HaMashiach do with the law? Yahshua HaMashiach said, I came to fulfill the law. I didn't, I didn't come to condemn it, but I came to fulfill the law. Now let's see how Yahshua fulfilled the law. You see, because there are some other things going on with this marriage between Yahshua and the assembly. Yahshua is the husband, our master, and the assembly is the bride. But let's, let's move on. That, ye, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahshua, in order that we might bear fruit for Yahweh. Now, first of all, you can't bear fruit for Yahweh without having Yahshua. Because first of all, when Yahshua comes into your heart and comes into your life, that's that constant reminder. What the Ruach HaKadosh is, is a constant reminder to come and lead you and to guide you into all truth. You heard today as you read in Sunday school, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. For you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What makes you free? What causes you to become free? The word. And Yahshua is the word, just the word wrapped in flesh. Yes. And the scripture lets us know, as we read on, here's what Shaul wants to share with us. The seventh chapter is a very powerful chapter. That we would bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, the what? The sinful, the stirring of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruits unto death. So, if you're in Yahshua, you have something bringing you toward life, which is eternal life, something directing you and steering you toward life. But if you're not, what you have in you is a navigator that's steering you and directing you to death. As scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh, what gift? Yahweh gave a gift through his son Yahshua. And that gift became the Ruach HaKadosh. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is what kind of life? Eternal life. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You can't have abundant life by doing good works. Good works is not going to do it. Some people are under the impression that if I do good and I give my good to, to feed the poor and I do all these wonderful things and I have all these wonderful events and all these ministries at a church or at, at, at your church or at our church and we help the poor and all those things are good. Those are fine and good. But those things do nothing for the members that you're warring against in your body. you got to take on the res become a recipient of the Ruach HaKadosh. Without that, as Yahshua told Nicodemus in the third chapter of John, except you be born again of water and of spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't care how many millions of dollars you give people. I don't care how many goods, goods you do. Though I give my body to be burned and have not love, I become a selling brass and a tinkling cymbal. All these things, even if you give your body to be burned. Yahweh ain't impressed by that because burning, all you're burning is a sinful body. That body never experienced the regeneration, the renewing of one's mind through the operation of the Ruach HaKadah. But these are not pastor's words. Let's see what scripture says. For when we were in the flesh, verse 5, the motions of sin which were by the law, excited by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered. What? Delivered. 
delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Uh-oh. Let's see. What are they saying here? But now we have received full release from the law by dying in that way when we, we used to be held captive. Yes. So that we serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness. In other words, we serve not under the old written code, which was under the Mosaic law, but in the new life of the spirit. It's not a letter of written rules that governed us, that told us we were in sin, that pointed to us that you are sinner. And that's what the law was. The law was a notification to let us know that we were in sin. Then the law stated various rules that we were, that we were to follow. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And we found out even with all the thou shall not, there was still something missing. Because in trying to keep the law as shall let the Sadducees and Pharisees know, your sinful nature won't allow you to do it. Somewhere down the line, you're going to miss the boat. Look what scripture says. That we should serve in a newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So, what's the conclusion? Look what Shaul just said. He said, well, so what do we do? We got a body that is born in sin. We got a body that has a sinful nature. And I don't care what we do, that sinful nature is going to always let us know that it's there. Uh -huh. yeah. And those of us right now, we can experience on a personal note. Let me come down, let me come down the aisle and sit on your pew. Let me sit beside you this morning to let you know that you're still under the auspices of sin in your nature. And even when you try to do good, evil is present with you. There be some things that before we were saved, spirit filled, that we used to do. Someone said we don't do no more. The Satan said, just to let you know that you ain't out the woods yet. Yeah. Just to let you know that you ain't all that holy and sanctified as you think. <laughs> yet I know that you have the rule of Hakadosh. Yet I know that you speak in tongues. Yet I know that Yahshua was living in your temple. I'm going to give you a constant reminder that you ain't out of the woods yet. There's a wall that's still going on in your members. And there are times when your members get aroused. Your members get excited. You know, just when you thought you were there, I've seen brothers, sisters struggle with the flesh. Some who may have habits of smoking, habits of alcohol, habits of lusting and running after women and men. Some having habits of a loose mouth that could cuss and make any sailor look like a Cinderella. <laughs> and somebody said, just when you thought those cuss words had gone away, Somebody rattle your cage, gets you upset, and you try hard to hold on to your religion. And then you find that your religion is now on the shoulders of the shelf. You find yourself somebody saying, well, you another one. And they start their cussing and all of a sudden something rise up in your nature. 
And them words that you used to say are now prevalent. It ain't like you forgot how to say them, how to pronounce them. The devil lets you know you still got it. You still got it, girl. Boy, you still got it. You can still cuss like a sailor. Now, I know Sunday you go into the church and you're going to sing praise and worship. That was Satan tell you. Now, go and take your holy, sanctified self on in the church and sing Sunday like nothing ever happened. And you know what you've been doing this week. Pastor going to be as transparent as I possibly can today. Because scripture lets you know this is our medication to get us better. And I thank Yahweh that he put vessels in scripture who walk the walk, who talk the talk. See, see what I'm, what, what I'm thankful for, yet Shaul wrote three quarters of the new covenant. One thing you should never ever forget, Paul struggled with his own personal fleshly body. There were desires that the apostle Paul speaks of in scriptures that he had. And he showed us how he had to war them off and fight them off. Just because, just because you become a child of Yahweh and you receive the Ruach HaKadosh and you immerse in the water in Yahshua's name, don't mean Satan takes a vacation from you. You are off limits. If anything, you are a target, you are a target to be taken out because you go to get the principles of what Satan has ordained for mankind. Satan is not like a roaring lion seeking who he made about. He's an enemy of Yahshua. He's an enemy of Yahweh. And anyone who turns their life toward walking with Yahweh, walking with his son to live a life, let me tell you something. It's a struggle to be obedient to the word because your flesh walls against the word. That common mind. But let's read on. Let's see what he says here. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Uh oh, look at the question mark right there. So Paul is having this conversation with these religious leaders. And he says, so what should we say then? I've, I've, given, you the, I've given you the format. I've laid, I've laid the blueprint out for you. I'm telling you right now, sin has dominion over our bodies, over our members. So we found out what the law, what the law told us. The law gave us rules to follow. We found out we couldn't keep them. So what should I say then? The law and sin. The same thing? Is the law itself a sin for thing? Well, let's say. He said, no. Nay. Listen what he said. No. I had not known sin, but by the law. Well, see, first of all, we didn't know we were sinning. We didn't know we were sinning and doing things that were not pleasing to Yahweh's sight until Yahweh gave us the law. So before the law, man was doing everything he was big enough to do. Taking another man's wife or a woman, another a wife taking another man's husband. They did it with no, no remorse at all. Thank you, bro. Didn't hit him. Drinking, smoking, cussing. Doing all the things that are not pleasing in Yahweh's eyesight. But when the law came, the law gave us a indicator, here's what you're doing wrong. That's why folk don't like scripture. Because scripture tells you what you're doing wrong. So if I don't want to hear the word of Yahweh, I close it up and walk away. Why go to a church where the preacher is going to tell you the truth, opposed to going to a church where the preacher is going to tell you what you want to hear? They would not endure sound doctrine in the last days. Keep to themselves, teachers having itch in this. My ear scratches because this preacher over here, he don't talk about abortion, he don't talk about homosexuality, he don't talk about adultery, he don't talk about uh, fornication, he don't talk about drinking, he don't talk about smoking, he don't talk about all these things of the flesh that we fight against. He don't talk about that stuff. He talks about prosperity. Living here on the earth and having your, your pie right now. He makes me feel good. Go out and do some good this week. Tell somebody that you love them. And you may be the big, one of the biggest sinners walking and need to be spirit-filled and be saved. And that's the message that you got. Not one that's going to lead you toward that spiritual 
walk with Yahweh, that spiritual body that you want to inherit. Everybody want to go to heaven. But everybody don't want to follow the plan. Everybody want to go to heaven. I don't know, I don't know too many folks who want to go to hell. I've met too many. Now, if I meet somebody who want to go to hell, I say, well, Satan did a good job on you. Because you drank the Kool-Aid and, and, and you enjoyed it. Look what scripture says. What shall we say then? Yahweh forbid. No, I had not known sin. On the contrary, I should have not have learned what sin is yeah. had it not been for the law. So Shaul says, I would have never known what sin was if it had not been for the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Yeah. Lust? Well, I thought lust was just a normal thing before Yahweh gave us the commandments and thou shalt not do this and thou shalt not do that. That's why man was doing everything he was big enough to do. Those three angels, they went into Lot's, Lot's house. And the men of the cities wanted to sleep with them. That was a normal thing for them. Homosexuality, lesbianism, that stuff ain't new. Been around for centuries. Women loving women and men loving men. It didn't just start a few years ago or 50 years ago. Why do you think Yahweh destroyed five cities, not just Sodom and Gomorrah? All the surrounding cities, go back and read your scriptures. There were other cities that were destroyed in that geographical location. Five cities total were destroyed because of immorality, because of Satan, because of sin. Let's read on for I, if, for I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. But sin taken occasion by the commandments wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. And what he's saying here, but sin finding occasion wrought in me through the commandments all manner of coveting. So in all that stuff that's in us, that comes out of us as a result of sin, the law spelled it out for us. For without the law, sin was dead. So sin didn't have no reminder. Sin didn't have no opposition. Sin did its thing until the commandments came. Man did his thing. For I was alive without the law once, and I felt that I was alive before when I knew no law. We felt, we felt we was okay, we were doing all right. We could do the thing we want to do. Take this woman, take that man, cuss this person out, drink this liquor. Lust for desires, bestiality with animals. All these things that the sinful nature would allow us to do. Worship idol deities. I ain't got to worship Yahweh. I can, worship, I can make my own deity. Give me a rock and some wood and carve them up and, and I can start and I, I bow down to that. Yahweh had to come and tell him, you don't have no mighty one before me. He had to remind man. Satan had man believing that he was all, all this in a you know in a box of cheese. But when the commandments came, sin received, I mean, I mean sin revived. And I died. So in other words, he says, the sense of sin found new life. With that, I died. I realized that I had broken the law and was a sinner doomed to die. So what, so what, so what the law did, the law came and gave us a wake-up call. That all that you're doing right now, you're going to die. Something else, something has got to change. And the commandments which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. I found was a sentence to death and brought me to death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me. Did what? Deceive. What does sin do? Deceive. 
sin deceives. Deceive me and by it slew me. Wherefore, if the law is set aside and the commandment set aside and just and good, was then that which is good made death unto me? Yahweh forbid. But sin that it might appear sin worketh death in me by that which is good. In other words, it was sin that killed me and thereby sin exposed its true character. It used a good thing to bring about my death. That sin by the commandments might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. But Paul says, I'm carnal. Soul under what? We know the law is spiritual. Shall we call himself carnal? For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. What, 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 what are you saying, Shaul? I do not understand my own actions. Shaul says, look, man, we, we think it through the intellect. Man. He said, I don't understand my own actions. Look what he's saying. For I do not what I would, but what I hate. I do not act as I desire to act. On the contrary, I do what I detest. I do not act as I would, but I do what I love. If then I do that which I would not, now if I'm doing and going against my, my good thing, the right way, I consent unto the law that it's good. That means I agree that the law is right. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that do what? <clears throat> but sin that dwelleth in me. How many of you know that sin dwelleth in you? <coughs> Somebody said, well, you know, I'm free from sin. You, you are? <laughs> you are? Yeah. Well, just keep right on living. <laughs> You'll find out quick just how free you are from uh, sin. As I've heard the term used, pluck my nerve. Pluck my nerve. Let somebody pluck your last nerve and see where your nature come in at. Somebody pluck your last nerve to the point where you go back to some of them old things you used to do, you used to say. Somebody said there was a time when I was smacked that you know what out you boy. I will hit you so hard, I will knock you out. I'll put a whooping on you that your mama didn't put on you. And I've seen, I've seen some, I've seen some situations where poor men were, were beaten unmercifully by women. You say, well, can a woman beat a man up? Oh yeah. Can a man beat a woman up? Oh yeah. And what causes them to do that? Sin. What causes you to hit on your wife and beat up on your wife? Beat up on your husband? Sin. What causes you to do all those damnable things? Sin. What causes you to start rumors about brothers and sisters? Sin. What causes you to gossip and talk about somebody? Sin. There ain't no little sin and no, no big one. Somebody said, well, you know, I only did a little tiny sin. <laughs> all this sin. We all have come short of the honor. The scripture says if Yahweh came today and marked iniquity, who would be able to stay? Now, if judgment is going to first begin at the household of Yahweh, and those folk are going to scarcely make it in, where do you think the sinner is going to appear? Not even a conversation, not even a hope. Look what scripture says. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth Underline it. Underline it. Look at verse 18. 
Shaul says, I already know in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Well, I got the rule of Hakadash. Thank you all way forward. That at the end of the journey, you're working out your own soul salvation every day. You're working on you and me every day. Putting that flesh under subjection. Look what he says. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. In other words, no matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. I can't. I can't do it. Verse 19. For the good that I would do, for the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that will I, which I do. Now this scripture, this scripture can twist your tongue, so let's go back and read it again. For the good that I would, I do not. In other words, for the good that I desire to do, for the good that I desire to do, but the evil which I would not, that, w that I do. In other words, the evil which I do not intend to do, that I'm ever, ever, ever practicing. I do wrong things that I do not want to do. And why can't you stop doing wrong things? Because that sinful nature in you is warring against the members of your flesh. What's warring against that mind? Where do the evil thoughts come from? They're impregnated in your mind. Why do you do these things? Where do the thoughts come from? Where does lust come from? When a woman sees a good-looking man, she starts lusting after him. Or if a woman sees a, a man sees a good-looking woman, he starts lusting after her. Where do those thoughts come from? They come from the sinful nature that's in you. Do you close your eyes and pretend you did sin? Well, you know, it's hard, Ella Belcher, to ride down the street. And a naked woman runs back. <laughs> a hard thing. That's a hard thing. Hard thing. Now, what you can do is fool yourself and close your eyes. Like you didn't see it. But that image is already where? In your mind. Your eyes just took a, a virtual photograph of that naked woman running down the street. And you say, well, some desires rose up in me. Where did those desires come from? They came from the fleshly nature of what? Sin. So look what the word lets us know. I love what Shah was saying here. For the good that I would do, I do. I do not. He says, then I find in verse 21, here, here, here's what pastors get into the conclusion of his message. I find then a law that when I do good, evil is present with me. Hey, wait a minute. I discovered, I discovered something through this experience. What did you discover through your experiences? When somebody, when somebody ticked you off, when somebody, when somebody got you upset. Did you revert back to that old man? Did that old, did that old man rise up in you? And you, you had to catch yourself. Get ready to cuss you out, boy. Because you know, people said, before I was saved, I was something. I will whoop your behind and wouldn't even think about it. Then I will go to church on Sunday and still praise the Lord. But that old sinful nature, look, 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 look what it says. I found in a law that when I was and when I would do good, evil was present with me. So Shaul says, even when I desire to do right, but wrong is always there. And it's, it's reaching, it's grabbing for me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. Uh-oh. Here come help. For in accordance with my better inner nature, I prove Yahweh's law. For I see another law in my memory. Wait a minute, what's going on? What's going on? What do you see in the distance here, Shaul? But there is something else deep within me, in my lower nature, warring against the law of my mind. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Some going against my mind. It's in conflict. It's battling against the principles which my, my reason dictate and bringing me into what? Captivity. I'm now a prisoner. Is there any hope? Well, now we are a prisoner in this body. In this body we are a prisoner because sin is there. It ain't going anywhere. But there's, there's a policeman, there's a counselor, there's a judge, there's a lawyer, there's a comforter. The Ruach is so many things. And the Ruach will speak to us. <laughs> Even in the midst of our adversity. And this is why having that confidence is so important. This is why Yahshua impressed upon John in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you got to be born again. Because what you are born of right now is flesh. And that flesh that you have is going to be going through turmoil until the day you die. Yep. Yeah. There's a war going on. There's a war going on in our members. And the only thing that can keep us solid and motivated, the only thing that can keep us hopeful and moving forward is relinquishing our flesh, becoming obedient to Yahweh's word. The thou shall not and the thou shall not, they're going to be there. They're going to cry out. But the only way they're going to become prevalent and applicable to our lives, we're going to have to ignore them. We're going to have to ignore them to the fact and we're going to have to abide by Yahweh's word telling you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do that. And what gives you strength? The more the words you put in you. See, anything was said this morning that stuck on your toes, that's a good thing. That's a good thing when, stuff, when the words step on your toes, it lets you know you're listening. And this is something you got to come up to. We all got to come up to. Look what the word says. I'm almost finished. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. The law of sin is where? In my members. And who's speaking? This is Shaul. Then he says in 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank Yahweh through who? I thank Yahweh through who? My mind, my intellect, my opinions, my feelings. I thank Yahweh through who? Yahshua HaMashiach. Our Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach. So then, when the mind, when, with the mind, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. I serve Yahweh through the rural Hakadash. Yeah. The law showed me where I was. The law continuously show us where we are. It is now the obedience. There's a wall going on. Which wall is going to be victorious in you? The law of sin or the law of Yahweh through his son Yahshua HaMashiach. It is through. He says, I thank Yahweh, verse 25, through Yahshua HaMashiach, our Savior, so then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh, yes. but with the flesh, the law of sin. Through Yahshua HaMashiach, we can win this war. Don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout what? Damn. Because we in the end, what do we know? We know who's going to win. Let's give Yahweh a great Yahweh's good. All the time. Thank you all we for that today, and we're going to get ready for our communion service. We're going to ask Ella Belcher to come at this time to take us further into our service. And for those of you who have your, your wine and your bread, you can follow Ella Belcher uh, accordingly. Hallelujah. It's communion Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 We're getting ready to have a prayer, but we want every man and woman to examine yourselves, Hallelujah. examine your conscience, so we don't eat or drink unworthily. Yes. And so we examine our mind, examine our uh, nature, examine what we went through, examine thoughts that come. 
And just exactly where you stand now with Yahweh, knowing Yahshua and Yahweh is able. And we want to thank Yahshua for shedding his blood for us many years ago. He reconciled us back, put us in the right standing with Yahweh. And we do this in remembrance of him, remembrance of the sacrifice that he made for us. He was that, that sacrifice that paid the price for us. We know that many goats and all that couldn't do it. We needed a, a, a better offering than that. And Yahshua was that offering that for mankind when he shed his blood for us. And we might have a right to the tree of life through him. Hallelujah. So we're going to have a prayer and then we're going to take our communion. Calvary.
word for your goodness and for meeting us here today, Father. Yes, Y'all always go forth today, strengthen and walk and talk and be with us, Yahweh. We know you for the greatness of your name, Yahweh. Hallelujah. We know you for Yahshua, Father. And we know you for being real in our life. Y'all move by your power, by your strength, Y'all. As we go forth today in Yahshua's name, let the assembly say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.